So, Coach Al Grimson, Heimar Hal Grimson, has basically stepped as head coach for the Jamaica um, football. And of course, the Football Federation, the Jamaica Football Federation, basically issued a couple of press releases that kind of made you wonder, you know, because um, of the relationship between the coach and the JFF, even if you're Stevie Wonder or Ray Charles, you could have said that the relationship were, was not, I won't say acrimonious, but it really wasn't the most positive of relationships. And so it was only a matter of time that they would have come to this position. Now, after what has been a, a fairly disastrous, well, a very disastrous Copa America tour, Al Grimson basically threw in the towel, gave the JFF an indication that why, you know, him want to take a break. And they apparently parted on reasonable terms. They, there was an understanding with his leaving. However, the story not really in this because when you dig deep, you realize that here's a coach who was recruited to the Jamaican setup after successfully carrying Iceland to the World Cup. And of course, on the basis of which they brought him into Jamaica and he would ultimately head up the Jamaican setup. He was a coach for two years and um, his results, not necessarily disastrous, uh, but you know, a little better than average, if you will. Although the fans of the Jamaica um, football would have preferred, you know, much stronger showing. But all in all, his numbers really weren't any worse than any of his predecessors, except that by the time we got to the Copa America tour, it basically became clear that he was out of his debt. And so the the business of him and his departure wouldn't have surprised any anybody. Of course, Mr. Chong, um, seen here, who is the, the general secretary of the Jamaica Football Federation, I, I remember on seeing the report that Hal Grimson had basically flown the coup I wondered um, as to the comment from the, the head of the federation because um, it became clear when his the announcement came out that Hal Grimson had basically signed on to take over the Football Association of Ireland's um, national football team as head coach. And, um, it, it, the impression was given by some of the comments coming out of Jamaica as if to say they would not have expected this, you know. And, you know, Mr. Mr. Chong was quoted in the papers that, you know, it, it sort of gave the impression that uh, maybe they were misled. But it was clear that Al Grimson was on his way. He left it, he basically gave up his, his house in Jamaica in January of this year move back to Iceland. And the Iceland team has been searching for a coach for a while. Their, their own search and their, their website was pretty pretty clear in respect of that, that they, they were out shopping and part of them shopping list, well, one of the persons on the shopping list became, became Hargrimson. So if Hargrimson is signing on with Ireland a week after he has stepped out of the Jamaican program. It's clear that he would have had been having conversations with them beforehand. And so the question that it begs is the commitment that he would have been showing as 
the 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 head coach for the team going into a major tournament like the Copa America thing. So the results were hardly unexpected in the circumstances. Now, the suggestion that, you know, he was in discussion with the Irish even before him leave the Jamaica setup. Um, and, and that it may not have been, you know, it may have left a sour taste in the mouth of, of some people. I think that people need to kind of just get on top of yourself. The reality is that people change job all the while. And the Jamaica football setup is is one that is no no less, you know, impacted by this change of personnel over protracted periods of time. The other side of it is that the JFF has had a huge question mark you know, posted above its operations for years. It's not a Dennis Chung problem. It's not a Michael Ricketts problem. It's a problem that is one that is endemic to just the way how the football program is developed and operated in Jamaica. But our reality is that the football federation where we have is where we have. And no moral suasion is going to be applicable to getting them to change their own style, to change their mode of operation. What you are getting from them is just what it is. So the fans are left with a choice. You work with the JFF for who them is, since we know who them is, and then you post a lot of expectation on the coach. And I think that's where this guy came in. And um, in spite of the fact that the fans gave him a hard time, and you know, but he did come to the job with a reasonable track record. I mean, he took Ireland to the World Cup um, last the last World Cup, and so um, he came with some you know commendable results behind him. The trouble is. He started to fall out of favor with the fans. And then he, I think, to, when, when having qualified the Jamaica team for the Copa America, Jamaica apparently was on the receipt, the receiving end of some, some 300 and odd thousand US dollars uh, that he felt that, you know, and this is just a dark newspaper released some of the information that he, ought to have benefited from some of that money, right? And um, that was not forthcoming. And then there was the imbroglio between himself and the team when he was trying to bring the the young boy, um, Bailey, back into the team, in spite of the fact that the boy, this in team members, this Jamaica, and there was disfavor and, um, expressed by members of the, the Jamaica squad with respect to this, but he kept pushing this envelope. And so he too was losing his way with the members of the team as well. So, you know, I'm going to leave in. Um, as I said, coaches do that all the time. It's a, it's, it's, it's a part of the hazards of the job that he chose to leave after an unsuccessful run with the Copa America tournament. Um, would have been expected if I was his boss, I'd have fired him too. But I guess them not having to fire him and him deciding to opt out of his contract midway into the contract, meaning that the JFF now not have to pay him no more money. And so man free in a, in a free market environment where people can move them skills all over the place and free for do that. Did he diss Jamaica in terms of you know, the, his overall approach? That is up in the air. Depends on depends on how people see Jamaica and the imagery of Jamaica football over time. Um, it's clear that he must have been negotiating with the Irish people before um, signing. It, it, it's clear to me that he would have been um, the, 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 in some discussions with them. 
because it, 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 it's almost impossible for him to just walk out of a job in a Jamaica. Um, and the next day, he turns up in an island and him sign a contract for run for the team. Again, he had the opportunity because him don't live in Jamaica. He gave up the house and he was only coming to Jamaica when him have when the team have activity, which so which kind of makes you wonder what kind of contract that he would have. If his contract is with the team, one would have think that he would have been living in Jamaica. He had moved back to Iceland um, as far back as January, according to newspaper reports. And so think the other thing is the JFF clearly is not the can be the easiest um, set of people to work with. And I say that against the background of look at what happened between himself and Lon Donaldson. Lon Donaldson is easily the most successful football coach in the region, coming out of the region. He has taken the Jamaican women's team to the World Cup twice, right? Twice he has been as, uh, associated with a, a Jamaica World Cup team. I'll be the women's team, it doesn't matter, right? I'm, and, and in spite of all of that, look at how the JFF treated with him. So if I am Al Grimson and you have a coach like Donald who is as successful, no other coach has done what he has done in the region. And the JFF basically literally spit on him and tell him, say bye-bye. They never tell him bye-bye. They literally run him out of the place. After that level of success, you know, consider that, you know, immediately after that, um, he, the Chicago Red Stars basically draw him in as the new head coach, you know. And they basically talked about his track record as a winning coach an advocate for his players and um, on their website they published that we believe that he has the experience and the leadership skills to elevate our talented group of players right so again here is a successful coach look at what how they were they he was treated by the jff look at how the jff has you know operated with its string of coaches um, since 1998 today, you know, it, it makes you wonder what is the, the 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 vision of football that the JFF has, and how that how are they executing the the steps towards realizing that vision, and 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 binding that vision to the desires of the Jamaican public, you know, there seems to be. A, a, a large amount of disconnect and again that disconnect you, you see it in the way how the 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 the, the, the management of the relationship with Hal Grimson um that he was also doing things that was running contrary to the the, the direction that the JFF has um and and again we we'll make reference to the Bailey issue you know kind of left very little room so he had a vision to uh, bringing in a lot more foreign players into the Jamaica setup and apparently was not very happy with how the JFF was responding to, to, to um, those requests. Um, the issue of getting passports for players from who were based in England to bring them into the Jamaica setup. So there was all this, um, the, a fair amount of disaffection between himself and his employers and in my opinion you know if things don't stay good with you and the people that you work with it just makes sense that you take a pull and and so you know there is this argument out there that him diss the jff but the jff <clears throat> knew the contract that they signed with him um there wasn't in my opinion any breach of the contract and it was a, it's clear based on what the general secretary said that they there was an amicable parting of sorts. I mean, Jamaicans miss the the era of the Rene Simois, but it's a different time now. We're almost 30 years away from that, three decades. Um, this particular coach Grimerson always made the argument about well, look back too much and not looking forward. But unfortunately, like the many before him. 
he has fallen by the wayside. And so, question is, where goeth Jamaica with his football? You know, the middle of the qualifiers now for World Cup, you know, and one wonders how they're going to address this issue. I know they're out there searching to find a coach, you know. Um, the fans are anxious, the fans are calling, in spite of the fact that Jamaica have this colorful thing with them football, people still follow the sport. And the sport is still a big part of the ethos of Jamaica. So hopefully the JFF can sort this out. We have to live with the JFF for who them is, whether we like it or not. May have my own amount of criticism and my level after them, but we recognize we have to live with them. You know, so listen guys, we just wanna kind of just move the ball along. If you like this this um commentary, we're gonna ask you for just like the video and if you have not yet done so you know subscribe to the channel so we can keep you posted this is the olympics now is right around the corner and we want to spend some time talking about that and share the thing but let me hear let me hear from you we'll get your feedback in the comment section of the video as well what you think what we're meeting respect